We've all been a lot more isolated lately. As many of us hunker down in our homes under some form of social restriction, the time away from family, friends and colleagues has been tough. But while social distancing is a challenge for many, some have turned the crisis into an opportunity. I'm speaking to some entrepreneurs who have made it their business to help tackle loneliness during the coronavirus pandemic. In the last two months, it's kind of gone a bit insane. Oh, it's like more than full time now. <laughs> I mean, I work on this probably 18 hours a day. In Norway, isolation also means insulation. That's the same word. Everyone thought of isolation as something yellow that you had in your wall until COVID. Even before the coronavirus outbreak, another pandemic was on the rise. Loneliness. In the era of connectivity and social apps, loneliness is ironically pervasive, especially among young people. Today, close to two thirds of adults in the United States report feeling lonely, up from just over 50% in 2018. The United Kingdom even appointed a Minister for Loneliness in 2018, after recognising it as a public health challenge. That has spawned a whole new industry aimed at combating the problem. One person who knows that better than most is 29-year-old Karen Dolver, co-founder of No Isolation. Over the past five years, the Norwegian entrepreneur has been working to tackle loneliness among children and the elderly with a series of warm technology products. One such tool is this telepresence robot, which connects children with long-term illnesses with their classrooms. While this tablet is specially designed for the elderly to keep in touch with their family and friends, the pandemic has highlighted the extent of isolation in society, says Karen. We've definitely seen a change in the, if you call it, loneliness market. Uh, I think when we started, we, uh, we were very much alone. Following the outbreak, demand for No Isolation's products has skyrocketed. In the final two weeks of March alone, the company sold 1,500 of its tablets and had to fast track production to fulfill new orders. Of the senior product, we thought we weren't going to produce anything more during 2020. We thought wow. we had a warehouse that would cover us through the year and, and, and they were all sold in two weeks. We had to uh, turn around and, and find ways of producing more units. Box Fresh has never been more true. That has helped more elderly people stay connected with loved ones as they shelter at home. Since the pandemic, each tablet user receives over eight calls per week on average, up from nearly two before the outbreak. It's quite cool to see how it's working because yeah. people are using it a lot and they're getting an average of 17 photos each week. Uh, and for, for these seniors, it's, uh, that's like getting postcards, right? They're getting uh, images of their grandkids. They're uh, getting video calls from their daughters. They are, uh, they're getting to be a part of the life that's happening outside their own, um, own little sphere. Every effort to encourage social connection counts. Studies suggest people suffering from loneliness can be more susceptible to physical health conditions, such as stroke, heart disease, and early mortality. But the psychological impacts of isolation can be major too. In March, the World Health Organization released guidelines for dealing with the mental health implications of coronavirus. That's where Calvin Benton, co-founder of UK-based Spill, comes in. Since launching in 2018, the mental health platform has been providing workplaces with access to online therapy sessions through the messaging tool Slack. But with most people now working remotely and facing new anxieties, that service has become more important than ever, says the 27-year-old entrepreneur. In the last two months, we've had more inbound requests for spill than we had in like the entire two years before that. That means Calvin has had to move quickly to sign up its fast-growing customer base. So many companies are wanting to support their employees and they're kind of wanting to support them now. Um, so we've had to build a way for companies to sign up instantly. Um, and yeah, we've had um, yeah, companies sign up um, and kind of roll out spill to their entire company um, in less than 10 minutes, which is really, really amazing to see. And it's not just demand from employers. Calvin says employees have been using the platform at four times the usual rate, especially for quick questions or one-off sessions. The thing that we've really seen is just like the, almost like the, the rise in the need for answers. There's so much uncertainty around like what's going to happen in the next few weeks and months. Um, and I think what's been quite cool is, you know, a therapist can also, almost they they can at least predict how like the like the emotional side of this is going to go. That's been good news for therapists too, who have been able to supplement lost income from face-to-face -face appointments with digital alternatives. 
Meanwhile, Spill has rolled out public services, such as Ask a Therapist on Instagram Stories and free therapy sessions for people who have been retrenched, which Calvin says is vital for raising awareness. It's cast a huge light on what we're doing. We've known we've had this amazing thing that's just been like a big awareness campaign. While isolation can take its toll physically and mentally for some, it's the boredom that's stifling for others. And there's a solution for that too. I'm Danielle Baskin. I am a product designer, entrepreneur, weird idea creator. Danielle is the co-founder of Quarantine Chat, an app designed to connect strangers isolating from coronavirus via random phone calls. The 31-year-old and her co-founder, Max Hawkins, built the service on top of their existing chat app, Dial-Up, in March, shortly after stay-at-home notices were implemented in the US. The idea was inspired by Danielle's earlier quarantine experience after getting infected with glandular fever, also known as mono. I just thought like, oh, it'd be cool if I could connect with someone else who had mono right now. So when coronavirus became a thing, I mean, I had this idea seated in my mind from years before. Also, our app was already connecting people all over the world. Um, so it just seemed like the perfect tool to use to connect people who are in self-isolation. And it's taken off. The app is currently responsible for 2,300 hours or more than 95 days worth of conversation each week across 183 countries. We thought it would be like a very simple way to cheer, like people would cheer each other up or, you know, it'd be these moments that um, sort of mimic talking to a barista or talking to your neighbor. But what happens is people are actually talking on the phone for a long time and becoming friends. Most of that growth has been organic through word of mouth. Danielle, who is now working on the app full time, is thinking about avenues for expansion. We are building a system within the app that if you like talking to someone, you can reconnect with them later. We're still building and testing it, but that's like the number one feature request that people have is, how do I stay in touch with previous matches? The potential to expand could put the app on course for the next level. I spoke to Eric Rees, author of The Lean Startup and founder of Long Term Stock Exchange, to find out what more these entrepreneurs can do to ensure success for the long term. You should have in your mind that how you behave in a crisis will be permanently etched into the memories of the people that you work with. So that is high pressure, high stakes, you better get it right, but also a tremendous opportunity to establish the new version of your company that you want it to be. For those companies that are somewhat thriving, what would your advice be for them in terms of making sure they don't just build themselves for this moment in time? for all companies, but especially those that are doing well, have a vision in your mind of what that new normal could look like for your business or industry, and try to live into that vision, viewing that emergency actions you're taking now are like the bridge to that new normal. We're not gonna be in the emergency state forever. And that includes some of these businesses are gonna see a huge surge of demand, and then in the new normal actually a fall off as the underlying prevailing trends reassert themselves. So it's also important not to go crazy over hiring, over this, over that, like we want to really be thoughtful about what is the long term framework that I can put these people into that will allow the company to thrive even if things go back to semi normal. While it's difficult to know what the new normal will look like, these entrepreneurs are hoping their ideas make a difference in the future. I truly hope that we can uh, scale this. It's, uh, it's not like the, these groups are any less vulnerable in the, in the United States or in Asia. This isn't something we're doing because it's like a poor man's version of therapy. We fundamentally believe it to be the future. It's difficult to know what like returning to normal even means. Um, but if we're used to communicating with each other virtually and become more comfortable talking to strangers, like why would we suddenly ditch all those friends?